there are really two reasons that I got into looking at physics of the bicycle. One is very selfish. I like bicycling, okay? and that, that's uh, me on my old bike uh, up there in the upper left. And the other one is that the bicycle provides a way in which you can talk about science, technology, and how it interacts with the culture itself. And right here, uh, these various pictures show different cultures and different uses of the bicycle. Uh, at least one of them, extraterrestrial up here. This one, for those of you going, flying a long distance and going back through Amsterdam, you can see the beer bicycle on the second floor of the airport and so forth. So these, these sorts of things are really quite different in different countries, although the science and technology is quite similar. And that's also true in India. Uh, took three of the four pictures here on Sunday, and we can see some different situations of use of the bicycle here. I'm really fascinated by this device, which I hadn't seen anywhere else, in that the pedals are up here. It doesn't look very efficient. Uh, and obviously good for people who have difficulties with their legs, but it seems to be using, being used by a lot of other people as well. Well, in preparing for this uh, talk, I did the standard thing. I went to Google and I searched for India and bicycles and discovered uh, a sport that I never knew about. That's uh, bicycle polo. Okay. You probably don't know that of the seven World Cups in, po in bicycle polo, India has won four of them. And India and U.S., Canada, and Australia have won the other three. I'm going to come back to that picture. There's something very interesting about that picture uh, that is related to culture, and I'll come back to that one later. Uh, bicycling has been part of our culture and has an important impact on our culture. Susan B. Anthony was a... Uh, pioneer in, in women's rights in the United States. And this is a quote. Uh, it goes on quite a bit longer than this about why this is true. I won't go into it right now. But in fact, in the late part of the 19th century, uh, particularly in the United States and England, bicycling became something that women did a lot and were allowed to do and allowed them independence in the sense that they didn't have to wait for a man and his horse and his carriage in order to go from one place to another. And it changed mobility entirely. Again, my Google search, I found some things related to India, particularly in small villages where women are now using bicycles to carry water. It changes the nature of their life quite a bit. So bicycling is a thing, or bicycles are a thing, but they are a scientific and technological thing that are very closely related to people. Uh, quickly, a couple of other quotes. Uh, this one, uh, I cannot find out where this came from. It's on many, many websites. I hope H.D. Wells really did say it, but I don't know for sure. Uh, this is the one that we've actually used a lot in our work, and that is the bicycle is mostly open. You can see it. You can figure out what's going on. Unfortunately, that's becoming a little less true these days than it was in 1936, but still you can do a lot with uh, just open parts, mechanics, and so forth. So let me talk a little bit about some of the things that have gone on in the past. I'm just going to briefly go through a few items here which uh, were developed at various times. The idea was to come up with some ideas on how to teach basic science, how that science has effect on culture, and how a local culture could affect the technology that's based on the science. The important point here is there, there are some different features here. There are some things that are basic uh, mechanics, but there's also some things about thermodynamics. Uh, and, of course, that involves the writer a great deal. How fast you can dissipate heat is uh, a very important thing. And for those of us who are bicyclists, we know that one of the worst things that can happen to you in terms of the thermodynamic features is to be going at the same speed as the wind uh, because there's no relative motion between you and the wind. And at that point, uh, the thermodynamic features change a great deal. 
And right now, another feature there that we, we have students do uh, measurements on is you can buy very expensive bicycling clothes, uh, mostly made in India, by the way. Uh, and those clothes are supposed to somehow help the heat dissipation. Do they really work, or is it just another way to uh, get money? Okay, we like to uh, include all levels of technology. I'm going to show a couple in a minute. And so that you can have things that are very easy to do with uh, off-the-street objects and things that maybe takes a computer or so. Uh, the history of the bicycle is very interesting. And why it is that bicycles are the way they are these days is not entirely a technological issue. It has to do with, uh, at least in the racing business, it has much to do with the fact that in the 1930s, some people outlawed certain things on bicycles that would have probably changed the whole way in which bicycles are, are built these days because then people did not develop them technologically. And then what I would like to do is there's a, there are a lot of research data available on the bicycle. Work those into lessons, and I'll show some examples in just a second. And then finally, the whole issue of students being able to look at how things are different in different cu cultures and different countries because of the local situation, even though the basic technology is really the same. Uh, and here's just uh, a number of different things we might do related to that. I already mentioned the first. Uh, just taking some of these old lessons and bringing them up to date or making them more uh, local is uh, of something that would be very, very valuable. And then getting the students involved in looking at different cultures and different types of bicycles, just getting pictures of different types of bicycles from different people would help. Let me just give a couple of examples uh, to finish up here. Okay, here's the uh, bicycle polo again. Uh, this is the U.S. in green versus... Uh, India in pink, don't know why, the colors of that, what they are, but that's what they are. And I, when I first saw this, I saw a very important difference. The helmets, the helmets right. Why don't the Indian bicycle polo players wear, wear helmets? Now, maybe all you have to do is go outside and, and look at what bicyclists put up with in Delhi traffic. And you'd say, well, what, if, they can get, if they can survive to be old enough to ride a bicycle, you know, these, these, these young men look like they're, you know, early in their 20s, right? They survived that long, so why do they need helmets, right? <laughs> it is, and it is true. If you, if you look at all of the pictures, all of the teams seem to wear helmets except the Indians. Uh, there's a cultural issue. Uh, it's also a safety issue, and it's also, I mean, and the safety is very deeply embedded in some very simple physics. But that's something that we could uh, get our students involved in. Okay, uh, let me just talk about different types of technology. How do you learn about the friction in a bicycle? Well, you put it up on a ramp. On the ramp here, you know the gravitational potential energy. You let it run, run down here till it's on the flat surface. You see how far it goes. It's just, you know, work of friction, and you can figure out what the force of friction is on that bicycle. Uh, you want to do something with air resistance, you can do it with a very simple device here that just blows backwards when the bicycle is moving, and then you can have a little scale right here and uh, read uh, approximate force off in that way. Okay, so that's a fairly, fairly simple set of technology, but can give you some good order of magnitude calculations. Medium level of technology, we put bicyclists in uh, wind tunnels, and we actually measured the force with a, a spring scale in those days, in the, in the 80s, so that students could uh, numerically integrate, sort of, by counting the frontal area of the bicycles. We just took shadow pictures of each one. We came up with a way to use the standard speedometer sending unit on a bicycle, which is just a reed switch that a magnet passes once per revolution, and then we hook that into an audio recorder, and we get a click each time it goes by, and you can take almost endless data that way, and then you take the data and use that data in a, a little analysis program in a spreadsheet, and you can start plotting velocity versus uh, time for the bicycle and, and look at all sorts of things in that way. If you want to go to higher technology, 
Uh, first, this is my bicycle right here. And uh, what I have on the bicycle it, back here is one of Pasco's uh, about six, eight month old, uh, what they're called GLX Explorer or something like that. But case, it's a portable device for, it's a portable computer in effect that has sensors in the top. This one has the accelerated acceleration sensor in it. And there's a picture of it. I can collect all sorts of data that way and I can put four sensors in there and so forth. Uh, we can do modeling, and here, here's from David Gordon Wilson's book is the uh, modeling. Actually, there's a, a very quickly here, there's a cultural difference here. This is the physicist's view of the equation. It doesn't look that simple when the mechanical engineer writes it down. And then you've got all sorts of things. You've got speed records here that allow you to uh, take some data that students can get, and those are on the web. This is from the Tour de France this year. One day. That was the finish, okay? Now, somebody has to win. The judges decided that the man on top won by two ten thousandths of a second. Do the calculation. One part in 10 to the eighth is the measurement of the time. Sensors on the bicycles that are actually determining that. That's a third of, ten, of ten, times 10 to the minus eighth. <laughs> All right. I think students could have great time discussing whether you can measure that. Okay, one more bicycle uh, in honor of the present year. And there are a couple of websites. If you're interested in this, or even better, if you have something you'd like to contribute, please let me know, and we'll take it from there. Thank you.